on William Jenkins Worth. Some of you may have been here at the Historical Society when Lieutenant Colonel Kirkbride uh, was still in Sylvester, and he did give a program at one time to the Historical Society on General Worth, but it's been at least 10 years, and I know there are a number of you were not members at that time, and as it does relate to our Worth County history, I thought it would be worthwhile to have another visit at that. I brought this uh, portrait of General Worth uh, from the library. I borrowed it from them. It hangs in the genealogy room, and it's above the bookcases there, so you have to look up. But this is a portrait, and you may want to uh, step up and look at him a little bit closer uh, at the end of the program. I also have several other sketches of him that I found on line that I'll pass around. But to get back to uh, General Worth, William Jenkins Worth, and by the way, the Worth County History Book has his middle name as James. Uh, this is in volume one, so that's an error. His middle name was Jenkins. But um, he was born on March the 1st, 1794, in the hamlet of Hudson, New York to Thomas Worth and Abigail Jenkins. His parents were Quakers, but as you can see from his long military history, he obviously rejected the pacifism of their faith. His father, Thomas, was a seaman and was re <clears throat> regarded as one of the original proprietors of Hudson, New York. He had an early common school education and then he worked briefly at a store in Hudson before he moved to Albany, New York to pursue a mercantile career. And he was there working as a merchant in Albany when the War of 1812 began. So with the outbreak of the war, he enlisted in the Army and he was appointed First Lieutenant with the 23rd Infantry on March 19, 1813. During the war, he was an aide-de-camp to General Winfield Scott and developed a friendship with him, so much so that he later named his son Winfield Scott Worth. In the War of 1812, he distinguished himself at the battles of Chippewa and Lundy's Lane during the Niagara Campaign. I wonder if there's any kin to any Lundy's on Sylvia's Lane. It's not a bunch. It's a yeah. different bunch. <laughs> In the later battle, he was seriously wounded by grape shot in the Thrott Thigh, and he was not expected to live. But after a year's confinement, he emerged with a brevity rank of major, though he would remain lame for the rest of his life. After the war, though not a graduate of the United States Military Academy, he served as the fourth commandment, commandant of cadets at West Point from 1820 to 1829. His duties there were to supervise the cadets and lead in the military education of these cadets. And it was during this time that Sylvanus Thayer, who was the superintendent of the military academy, developed many of the concepts that made the academy what it is today. He was the father of the academy and he had two guiding principles. The first was strict adherence to the rules of discipline and subordination. And the second was the advancement of promotion according to the merit. And there was no, to be no distinction between students either because of their family connections or their financial background. As a brevet major, Worth uttered his most famous words that are now inscribed in West Point's Bugle Notes, which is a book of knowledge that all cadets must know by heart. And this is the uh, quote from that. But an officer on duty knows no one. To be partial is to dishonor both himself and the object of his ill-advised favor. What will be thought of him who exacts of his friends that which disgraces him? Look at him who winks at and overlooks offenses in one, which he causes to be punished in another and contrast him with the inflexible soldier who does his duty faithfully, 
notwithstanding it occasionally wars with his private feelings. The conduct of one will be venerated and emulated, the other detested as a satire upon soldiership and honor. He rose to the rank of colonel in 1838 when he was put in command of the newly created 8th Infantry Regiment. Using his own tactic, tactics, he successfully prosecuted the Second Seminole War in Florida and was made a brevet brigadier general in 1842. Eventually, he convinced Secretary of War John C. Spencer to allow the remaining Indians in the territory to confine themselves to the region south of Peace Creek and declared an official end to the war in August of that year. When the Mexican-American War began, Worth was serving under Zachary Taylor in Texas. This would have been before Taylor was president. And negotiated the surrender of the Mexican city of Matamoros. He next commanded the 2nd Regular Division, Army of Occupation, at the Battle of Monterey. In 1846, he was given his highest rank of Major General and assumed the governorship of Puebla. In 1847, Worth was transferred to his old friend Winfield Scott's army and placed in command of the 1st Division. During the amphibious landings at Veracruz, he jumped from the boat he was in into shoulder deep water and waded ashore to become the first American to make an amphibious landing. <laughs> well, maybe the first recorded. <laughs> ship and you know, boat and wood waited in the shore. <laughs> anyway, he took part in the seas, siege of Veracruz and engaged in the following battles of Cerro Gordo, Contreras, and Churubusco. In Mexico City, Scott ordered Worth to, see, to seize the Mex Mexican works at the Molino del Rey. Worth and Scott's friendship came to a head when Scott refused to allow Worth to modify the attack, and the battle caused the 1st Division severe casualties, much to Worth's dismay. He later renamed his son from Winfield Scott to William. So, <laughs> took care of Winfield right there. <laughs> when U.S. forces entered Mexico City, Worth personally climbed to the roof of the National Palace and took down the Mexican flag, replacing it with the stars and stripes. For his service, he, awarded, he was awarded the Congressional Sword of Honor. So not only did he jump off the boat and wade ashore, <laughs> then he also climbed to the roof and took down the flag. So uh, Anyway, in 1848, Worth was approached by a group of Cuban Freemasons known as the Havana Club composed of sugar plantation owners and aristocrats who advocated the overthrow of the Spanish colonial government in Cuba. The Havana Club sent college professor Ambrosio Jose Gonzalez to entreat Worth to lead an invasion of Cuba. Knowing Worth was also a Freemason, Gonzalez presented the war hero with a Masonic secret handshake and subsequently offered him $3 million to lead an invasion force of 5,000 American veterans of the Mexican-American War against the Spanish in Cuba. Worth accepted the offer, but before the plot could be concluded, he was transferred by the War Department to Texas. He was in command of the Army's Department of Texas when he died of cholera on May 17th. 1849 in San Antonio. Throughout his life, Worth was a respected military tactician, and his writings had been required reading for generations of cadets at West Point. The recipient of a Congressional Sword of Honor, the Frontier Post, he man became the metropolis of Fort Worth, Texas, Lake Worth, Florida, and Worth Street in Manhattan are also named in his honor. And of course, we know Worth County was named in his honor also. 
After Worth's death, his body was temporarily interred at Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn. Being, <coughs> before being buried on Evacuation Day, November the 25th, 1857, at the Monuments location at the intersection of 5th Avenue Broadway and 25th Street. The burial followed an elaborate processional which included 6,500 soldiers. A relic box was placed in the cornerstone and Mayor Fernando Wood delivered the principal oration. The Worth Monument was designed by James Goodwin Batterson, who founded the Travelers Insurance Company and was also involved in the design and construction of the United States Capitol and the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., as well as the New York State Capitol in Albany, New York. The monument consists of a central 51-foot high obelisk of fancy granite with decorative bands inscribed with battle sites significant in Worth's career. On the front is attached a bronze equestrian relief of Worth, a decorative shield, and ornament. On the back is a large bronze dedicatory plaque. Four corner granite piers support an elaborate ornamental cast iron fence whose pickets are replicas of Worth's ceremonial sword of honor and which has an oak motif. The north side fence was removed about 1940 to accommodate an above ground utility shed which serves the water supply system pipes beneath the monument. In 1941, the city restored the monument. In 1995, the monument again underwent an extensive restoration funded mainly by the Paul and Kiera Rosette Foundation and U.S. Navy Commander retired James A. Woodruff, Jr., Worth's great-great-grandson. He and his family have endowed the maintenance of the monument and surrounding planning bed through the Municipal Art Society's Adopt a Monument program. And I have a uh, picture of that monument I'll pass it around. Now you might want to know, what does that have to do with Worth County? How did He never lived in Worth County. He never lived in the state of Georgia. He was not born in the state of Georgia. And uh, he died before Worth County was created in 1853. He died in 1849. He, maybe he went through Georgia on his way to the Seminole War. Um, but all of that aside, the reason Worth County was named after him was because of William A. Harris. William A. Harris, as you may know, he has lots of connections in Worth County. He was actually born in Milledgeville on January 18, 1826, and he was the oldest son of the Honorable Iverson Harris, who was a jurist in, in the state, and his mother was Mary Euphemia Davis. He was, uh, in his boyhood, he uh, was a student of some celebrated teachers, and when he was 13 years old, he entered Oglethorpe College. Then he spent two years under the Reverend T. M. Cooley, who was a lawyer at Grantville, Massachusetts, and finished under the late Bishop Stephen D. Elliott at Montpelier Springs. So obviously the family had some money if they were from Milledgeville, and he was going to school in Grantville, Mass. So anyway, when the war was declared in Mexico, he left school and he came home, and he went to that war's front under Henry R. Jackson, who was the colonel commanding the Georgia Volunteers. He was in Quitman's division of General William Worth's brigade, and that's how the connection was made with Georgia, but through uh, William Harris serving under General Worth in the Mexican-American War. After that, he uh, came to reside in Irwin County, which of course now Worth County was taken from that, to practice law. And when the time came to create Worth, he was also involved in politics, and he was the one that gave it the name of Worth in honor of this commander of the Mexican War, and named the county site Isabella for General Worth's wife. 
this money to us. Now, as I said, this is uh, a portrait from, from the library. And if you've been to the courthouse, you will notice that there is a, a portrait there that was painted by our own Sylvia Moore Dinkle. And it replaced the one that was burned when the courthouse burned down in the 80s. Uh, Sylvia pointed, uh, painted a lovely portrait, and there was a ceremony uh, with the then county commissioners and the Barnet Trail chapter of the DAR when that portrait was presented. And uh, also there is a, a cabinet and that has some of the memorabilia from uh, Colonel Harris, his uh, coat. And if Abbas was here, she could tell you more information about Colonel Harris as they are related. And those uh, items from Colonel Harris came into the possession of Abbas's family, and they were the ones that donated those to um, the courthouse. So I, I just find it interesting that uh, Colonel Harris was a native of Georgia. He spent time in Georgia, obviously. Had to have had a lot of contacts with people in Georgia in political uh, circles. And yet when it came time to name the county, instead of picking someone from Georgia to name the county after, he chose this name of Worth, so he obviously had to admit a lot to uh, Colonel Harris. And, and like I said, uh, General Worth was not even alive at that time. He died in 1849, and yet the county uh, was established in 1853. But I did have a few. There's this uh, portrait, and this this may be his ceremonial uh, sword of honor. 